what's up y'all? Today we got some Inconel 718 that we're gonna be doing some five axis roughing on. But instead of solid carbide, we're gonna be using ceramics. In the next few videos, I'm gonna be giving you some insights of how I program this part. So stick around and at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you how I use Mastercam's a long curved tool path to rough the outside profile of the part. <laughs> Ceramics take some getting used to. They're typically a lot louder than regular carbide, so there is a small learning curve in what sounds good and what doesn't. Unless you've ran one of Barry's programs before, then you're familiar with loud noises. By using ceramics, we can increase our surface footage dramatically, which is going to increase our metal removal rate and decrease our cycle time. The main thing to remember about ceramics is that while they may be extremely hard, they're also very brittle. So the inserts aren't going to be able to take a lot of hammering. So we will need to make sure our tool path is smooth as possible when we're doing five axis rough. While it may be very simple to apply a five axis tool path to a part, there's a lot of things to consider depending on if you're roughing or finishing. Things like cut tolerance, tool path smoothing, and point distribution are all gonna have an effect on things such as surface quality and overall program performance. Without controlling these things, you may end up with a choppy tool path with a lot of pauses or jerking motions. multiple parts to program, you need to keep in mind certain safety factors and things will change from part to part. So let me show you what I mean by that. So I'm using Mastercam's a long curved tool path for the roughing passes for this face mill. And as you can see, Mastercam easily put all of the roughing passes into one operation. The concern I have with this tool path is that if we were making multiple parts and the material thickness fluctuates, and if we have excess stock sticking out of the top right here, you could end up plunging down into the material prematurely. So I think a much safer approach would be to come from the outside and work your way in on both sides. And in order to do that, the first thing we need to do is come up and take our surface and split it into two equal halves. Then we're gonna go back into our operation, deselect the surfaces, come back in and only select one side. Get in selection. And we need to change our stock we're leaving on the bottom to 60 thou, which is how much we're taking per roughing pass. We're gonna hit okay. Now, as you can see, it's only roughing the left side. Then we're gonna take this tool path, copy and paste it directly under it. Now we're gonna go into this new created tool path, go into cut pattern, Deselect that surface and select the opposite side. Get in selection and OK. So now that we have the right side roughed, now what we need to do is create one final pass that goes all the way across the material. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy this tool path one more time, paste it, go into the parameters, and under machining geometries, now we're going to select both surfaces. In selection, and we're gonna change the floor stock to our final depth for our roughing. So we're gonna leave 10 thou to finish. Next, we're gonna to go to our roughing tab and make sure we deselect the depth cuts. We're gonna hit okay. Now we have one pass that goes all the way across. So if we back plot this and we come down over the part, we'll see that this tool path drives the center line of the tool. This is probably gonna break your inserts. So in order to fix that, we're gonna hit OK, we're gonna go back into our parameters, we're gonna to go to tool axis control, and we're gonna put a slight forward tilt on this tool. We're gonna to go something small like one degree, and then hit OK. You see the tool path changed. Now we go into their back plot again, bring the tool down, and you can see it starts off the part, and now we're entering the cut with the leading edge of the insert. 
Thanks for watching and be on the lookout for our next video in this series where we go in and we rough these pockets with ceramic end mill. We'll also give you some tips and tricks at the end of that video as well. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and leave us a comment down below. And don't forget to subscribe to help support free education and we'll see y'all next time.